So uh, here I am, I'm outside Gloucester Royal Hospital, just to show you how dead it is. OK, Debbie, walk through the main entrance now. Point out again how dead it is. Look, it's absolutely dead. Look, look. Look at this. Come on, Debbie, say something like, where's the second wave? Where's the second wave? That's good. Where's all the people dying from the second wave, hey? Where are they? Even better. All right, we've made the point here. Go back out and head for A and E. Let's show how dead it is. Oh, can I get through to A and E this way? I don't think I can. Right, I'm going to walk back outside again. Oh, for goodness sake, Debbie, it's not rocket science. Oh, two people. I've literally seen about... I've got a scarf. Uh, sorry, I'm exempt, actually. You shouldn't be asking me. Yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't be asking me about about that. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Tell her to piss off, Debbie. None of your business. Sh two stupid old women asking me why I'm not wearing a face covering. Yeah, I heard. What a pair of bitches. <clears throat> okay, that's the door for A and E. Go on in. Okay, so I'm going into A and E. Don't forget to say there's no one there. Let's just have a look. Oh shit! So we've got three, four, five. Abort! Seven abort! In A and E. Make something up. Let's say they're all space. being denied emergency treatment. All the people being denied emergency treatment. That'll work. We'll have more on this fearless visit to a ghost hospital later. No matter how obvious something is, there are always people willing to shut their eyes and pretend they can't see whatever conflicts with their beliefs. We've seen it in everything from creationists to flat earthers to climate contrarians. But COVID-19 really seems to have brought this home. So meet Ted Nugent, who got dressed up in camouflage gear to shut his eyes to the COVID-19 pandemic. It's not a real pandemic, and that's not a real vaccine. I'm sorry. If you've never heard of Ted Nugent, he's a guitarist from... I don't know, yesteryear. But these days, he's amassed quite a following for statements like this. Lying, scam, smoke and mirrors, COVID-19 freaks. And I'm going to stand six feet away from everybody. Are you that stupid? Why weren't we shut down for COVID-1 through 18? There was a COVID-1 and there was a COVID-2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. COVID-1 through 18 didn't shut anything down, but whoa, COVID-19! If you're not already face-palming, let me explain. COVID-19 is not the 19th incarnation of COVID. There was no COVID-1, 2, 3 and 4. It's called COVID-19 because it's a disease caused by coronavirus and it was first discovered in 2019. Now, there's nothing wrong with not knowing that or asking where the name COVID-19 comes from. And 99% of us who might ask that question would simply Google it and go to a reputable website where the origin of the name is explained. That's exactly what I did, and it took me all of 21 seconds to do that. But in the age of the internet, bloggers and video makers don't spend 21 seconds finding the answer. Instead, they spend 21 minutes setting up a camera, spouting their beliefs into it, and then uploading it for the world to pass on. As I said in my video on lockdowns, I have no problem with people who want to argue that we shouldn't lock down. That's an opinion. But opinions have to be based on an understanding of the facts. And this wasn't. Now, you may wonder why Nugent replaced his combat fatigues with a bathrobe and isn't looking too well as he continued to argue that COVID-19 is a hoax. Well, after a few days... We found out why. But I got an announcement to make, and everybody told me I should not announce this. But can you hear it? I have had flu symptoms for the last 10 days. That have just, I thought I was dying. Boy, I got a stuffed up head. Body aches. My God, what a pain in the ass. I literally can hardly crawl out of bed. I was tested positive today. That's right. The virus he'd been claiming for months was a scam from a pandemic that didn't exist finally caught up with him, and he contracted it himself. But we're not done yet. Nugent explained that before he got tested, he couldn't see the point in having a test. So I said, Doc, all right, you want me to get tested? 
I haven't been tested, haven't taken the vaccine, so nobody knows what's in it. Actually, some people do know what's in it. And if you can't even honestly answer our questions of exactly what's in it and why are you testing it. If I test positive for the Chinese virus, what will you do different for me than if I test negative? And all the doctors said, nothing. <laughs> and he no. said, what would be the good from knowing if you can't do anything different for me if I test positive than if I test negative? You say it's good to know. What's the good? If it's good to know, what good are you offering me? What good? There's no good. It's not good to know. There's nothing you're going to do. Fucking <laughs> goofballs. Actually, these are two separate questions, and they're good questions. But Nugent only gave the doctor's answer to the first one. What's the answer to the second one? Well, the clue is in the question itself. If you can't do anything different for me, 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 what good are you offering me, 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 me? If you're going to ask a good question, then you have to be willing to listen to the answer. I'm sure the doctors told Nugent that it's not always about me, me, me. It's important for someone to know if they're carrying the virus, not for their own sake, but for the sake of others around them. If they know they have COVID-19, they can make sure they don't infect their wives, fathers, mothers or uncles, or the old woman living next door. It's like wearing a mask. It may not offer you much protection, but it does offer protection for people around you, because it's not always about me, me, me. Other people have the same rights and freedoms that you do. Get it? One thing I do have to give Nugent credit for, at least when he got the diagnosis, he did accept it. Some people have been so programmed to believe the pandemic is a hoax that they can't even accept that they've got the disease. What? Even when they're struggling for breath and dying in hospital, you might sceptically and somewhat dismissively inquire in disbelief? Yeah, even then. And they don't want to believe that COVID is real. And the reason I tweeted what I did is it wasn't one particular patient. It's just a culmination of so many people. And their last dying words are, um, this can't be happening, it's not real. Or when you try to reason with people of, can I call your family, your kids, your wife, your friend, your brother, and they say, no, because I'm going to be fine. And you're watching their oxygen levels, um, you know, maxed out on what we call vapotherm at 100% and their oxygen level might be 75. That's not really that compatible with life. And we know where that's going to head. And it just makes you um, sad and mad and frustrated. And then you know that you're just going to come back and do it all over again. One other thing, because if Ted Nugent believes this stuff, then I'm sure others believe it too. Haven't taken the vaccine, so nobody knows what's in it. And if you can't even honestly answer our questions of exactly what's in it. Pharmaceutical companies have told us what's in the vaccine. The information is freely available online. Again, it only took 21 seconds to find it. Of course, if you believe there's a worldwide conspiracy among pharmaceutical companies and health authorities to add an ingredient that will poison you, then you have bigger problems than COVID-19 to worry about. Talking of people who think the authorities are out to get them, let's go back to that empty hospital video. I was led to it by a poster on my channel who echoed the claim that COVID-19 isn't real because those videos of hospitals filled with COVID patients are all fake. At first sight, the video does seem to show an empty hospital. Where are all the COVID patients? Where are all these alleged ventilators and people supposedly struggling to breathe and the doctors and nurses who claim they're worked off their feet trying to save lives? Well, I checked by looking at a plan of the Gloucestershire Royal Hospital. And it turns out that COVID patients are in a completely different building, three floors up on Block C. The woman who took the video, Debbie Hicks, was filming the outpatients department. How do I know? Well, firstly, because you can follow her route on the plan, and secondly, because of one of the dumbest giveaways in the history of conspiracy theory videos, she films a ticket machine marked Outpatients Check-In. Gee, there's a clue. COVID patients aren't brought into the outpatients building. That's the whole point of keeping infectious patients separate. Not only that, it turns out Debbie did this stunt on December 28th, which was a public holiday in the UK, so the outpatients department was closed. Debbie Hicks would have known that, so this is where ignorance crosses over into deliberate misrepresentation. 
By the way, I thought I'd save dozens of drama queens the trouble of writing posts like these, expressing outrage at how Debbie Hicks was later charged with a public order offence. So, no, she wasn't charged with denying COVID or for being true. No, it isn't against the law to hold a belief. How is it a public order offence? Well, if the drama queens who think there's a law in Britain making denying COVID or holding a belief illegal, just spend 21 seconds online finding out what the public order offence was. She was charged with threatening or abusive words or behaviour likely to cause harassment, alarm or distress when she allegedly lashed out at staff after they asked her to stop filming, contrary to Section 5 of the Public Order Act. The reason filming isn't allowed in a hospital without permission is the same reason you can't film inside a school or a public toilet or a gym changing room without permission. It's not all about me, me, me. Other people have a right to privacy. Don't worry, Debbie won't serve jail time or become a martyr. The most likely outcome, if she's found guilty, is that she'll be bound over to keep the peace. The thing is, you don't need to film an outpatient's department on a day it's closed in order to convince people that hospitals have been seeing far fewer patients. Just watch the evening news. It's hardly a secret, and there are very good reasons for it. Vanessa Johnson has asthma as well as a history of pulmonary blood clots. Her mother, Sarah, has multiple health issues. A few weeks ago, they decided during this COVID emergency to stay away from the emergency room. One reason there's a drop in emergency room visits is because there are fewer traffic collisions. In San Francisco alone, the city is reporting that compared to last April, this April, they're seeing a drop by 50% in traffic accidents. Doctors have openly stated that they cancelled a lot of non-essential surgical procedures and treatments in order to cope with the inundation of COVID cases. At the same time, people who do have serious issues like heart problems and suspected cancers have been urged by doctors to come in for diagnosis and treatment, but they chose to stay away because they were afraid of catching COVID-19 in hospitals. Now, you may say, it's easy to debunk people like Ted Nugent and Debbie Hicks. They're clearly not that bright. But in the end, it doesn't matter whether this false information is coming from people who left school without qualifications or learned professors with degrees up the yin-yang. Politics doesn't matter either. Debbie Hicks was an active member of a left-wing organisation and Ted Nugent was an active member of a right-wing organisation. It doesn't matter if the spreader of disinformation is an anonymous poster on a forum or a goofy-looking bloke in a beanie. But to some people, it does matter. In my video on PCR, no one contradicted my correction of a misquote on several anonymous blogs. But when I showed what one of the bloggers actually looked like, and corrected him, that caused outrage. You chose to debunk some barely literate guy making his video out of a car in Australia. It's very easy to go for low-hanging fruit, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if Beanie Bloke is a shill putting on an act anyway. This is low-hanging fruit for a man of your standing. My standing? Checking information really isn't that hard, so anyone who changes a quote or misrepresents a scientific paper is low-hanging fruit. Why would a claim by someone who looks one sandwich short of a picnic be very easy to debunk, but for some reason the same claim made by a well-spoken graduate in a suit is supposedly much harder to debunk? Is bullshit not bullshit because it's spouted by someone with professor in front of his name or doctor? After doing this for 14 years, I can tell you that if anything, these professors and PhDs are easier to debunk because they often state their sources. And that makes it very easy to see how they've misread or misrepresented their own source. With the bloggers and the beanie blokes, you usually have to spend more time tracking their sources down because they don't give them. It's not people I'm debunking, it's the crap they spout. So it makes no difference whether the claimant is an anonymous person hiding behind a blog or someone on his front porch or someone with a science degree in a slick video production paid for by a lobby group or an atmospheric physics professor, a solar physics professor, a geochemistry professor, or a stratigraphy professor. It doesn't matter whether they're amateurs dressing up to make their point, or professionals dressing up to make their point. It doesn't matter whether exactly the same myth is spouted by a politician, 
or by a twit with a PhD. They're all low-hanging fruit because crap is crap. As long as they're spouting nonsense and thousands or even millions of people unquestioningly believe what they say, then I've been very happy to fact-check them all. Well, what would happen? Well, I'll tell you what would happen. is the nostrils would catch on fire. My channel doesn't ask for money, and unlike most YouTubers, I don't make these videos for financial gain. But since people have frequently asked if they can contribute something, I've suggested they send money to an innovative charity called Health in Harmony. The charity's unique system of trading healthcare for forest protection is now the subject of a peer-reviewed study from Stanford University. It confirms that the model has resulted in 70% less deforestation in an important national park, saving over 27 square kilometres of rainforest. The study also found that it's provided cheap medical services for over 28,000 people who would otherwise have been cutting down trees to pay for health care. The model is now being extended from the forests of Borneo to Madagascar and Amazonia, funded in large part by contributions from my subscribers. So whether you want to support a charity that protects forests, or one that saves animals, or one that improves health care, now you can do all three. There's something in it for everyone.